You are now listening to From the Jump. Welcome to From the Jump, your source for all things hip hop. I'm a syllable. This is my co host, Mr. White. Make sure you subscribe and leave a comment below saying, I subscribed, and we'll try our best to reply to your comment. And today we're going to cover Kid Cudi's new Netflix series, Intergalactic, which is pretty dope that he's coming up with this. And it's about a young man's search for love. It's got a star studded cast with like Ty Dolla Sign. He's working with the producers of Blackish. Like, yeah. this is this is Macaulay Culkin's playing Pat down downtown pat whoever that is uh i'm not like on the edge of my seat about that but it's interesting that he's roped in this amount of talent yeah. for doing this he's got uh who else has he got on here tiana taylor's on there yeah very big yeah he's got work. jessica williams uh daily show senior correspondent and fantastic beats is meadow timothy chalamet who played dune prophet paul atreides right the recent dune movie he's got laura harrier which is peter parker's love interest liz allen and spider-man homecoming is carmen he's got vanessa hudges is karina zero seven Shake is Nadia and 070 Shake was on like Kanye West songs like uh, what was it Ghost Town of Violent Crimes and stuff like that she released one of her second album uh, You Can't Kill Me in 2022 this year Kenya Burris the uh, the creator of Blackish is also collaborating so this is pretty dope this is pretty dope. I've seen some of the previews for it, and it looks. I like the nice. animation. It looked very clean. It looked very realistic. It looked very almost cyberpunkish, like in a way yeah. where it's like the it, it kind of has this purple hue through everything. I, I just I like the creativity of someone saying I'm gonna drop an album, but I'm also gonna drop another piece of art with it. So basically, the soundtrack is an album that goes with this series yeah. and that's really cool man it Cuddy is, is just such a creative genius yeah when it comes to stuff like this and he's showing it once again that he's willing to put the art first instead of just being egotistical and be like i could do it all myself he brought in a lot of talented people yeah. to make sure this goes right you bring in kenya bears i mean blackish is one of the longest running black sitcoms that has multiple spinoffs yeah. and this guy knows what he's doing in terms of series and tv and stuff like that he knows what people are willing to watch he's going to know how to get it directed properly yeah. what type of scripts need to come no in doubt. so I don't doubt that this is going to be a hit, right? Definitely. And then Kid Cudi makes amazing music. So. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So his first album, like Man on the Moon or whatever, that really got big, mm -hmm. he's got a song called Intergalactic. Like, yeah. Like, Enter the Doorway, Intergalactic. So I think he's kind of going back to some of that and being like, what Where else can I spin off of this? But he also does so many cool things, like Musicians on Call, where musicians play at bedsides of patients that are ill and sick. Like, mm -hmm. he does a lot of stuff for mental health awareness. Absolutely. You know, it's... It's, it's incredible when you go down the rabbit hole of how much Kid Cudi has influenced music. A lot of folks say that he came up with that kind of genre blending R&B singing style and being vulnerable way before Drake ever yeah. did his style. And that Drake even copped some of his style off of that. You and know? we could both agree that vocally he's leagues beyond Drake in terms of singing. Oh yeah. Uh, his range. And, and also rapping. Right? Yeah. I think he could beat Drake in both of those areas <laughs> with no issue. What do you guys think? Um, could could Kid Cudi beat Drake in a rap off? Uh, comment below. But uh, you know his whole history is pretty interesting, right? Because he was working at the mega store, just at a clothing store, right? Mm -hmm. And then he saw Kanye West come through the line. Was like, hey, check out some of my music, right? Apparently, he probably did it in a very honest and sincere and emo way that uh, <laughs> maybe other rappers with more of the braggadocio approach didn't do. And then Kanye, being emo himself in a lot of ways, really responded to that. You know, but that wasn't where he popped off, right? Even at one point, he was having to run after Kanye when Kanye left, and I think either the alarms went off or he forgot a belt or some shit was going on. Mm -hmm. He's running after Kanye at the store, and uh, and then ended up he had his day and night song that blew up off of MySpace. Oh my God, right? that song was so huge. Yeah, it got really huge. And I still like that song. Yeah, it's a good song. Uh, when MySpace was big, right? Remember those days? Yeah. Um, and after that. Ye was like, all right, let's start working together. And so then Kanye even got Kid Cudi to write on the Blueprint 3 lyrics uh, with Jay-Z and, and hooks and stuff like that. So it's incredible to watch his growth, but also how much he's inspired other people to open up about mental health issues and be vulnerable in hip hop. Yeah, you don't see too many artists taking this approach to rap because there's so much of a barrier when it comes to 
entering the music without that hard edge. Rap's supposed to be gritty. It's supposed to be underground. And he's doesn't care, right? He makes his own type of music. He's very genre bending. And he's always been that way. How many artists do you know that have more than a handful of songs that are positive, right? Like we talked about, like Pharrell's yeah. happy, right? Right. Ice, but this Ice guy Cube's, has yeah, Ice Cube's good, good day. day. Like you can probably name on one hand the amount of happy hip hop songs that are out there. Which makes me question: Does hip hop have to be dark? Does it have to be negative? Does it have to be always about that shit, right? That's why I like Flossin'. I like songs that are about Flossin' because that shifts the dialogue at least a bit more. Over over the shift left of the dial of just always like shit's fucked up. I'm not saying we can't talk about shit being fucked up because shit is fucked up. I came from a broken home. I came from the streets. All this shit happened to me. But there's also worth pointing, what should we focus on? Let's yeah. focus on also the good shit. And Kid Cudi does that uh, in a very interesting way. You know, I didn't realize until recently that Travis Scott actually took his stage name from Kid Cudi's legal name, Scott. Right, mm -hmm. and that's pretty dope. His influence has been spread to obviously Kanye West, who loves him. You know, in 2010, he said he was like the most relevant artist alive, and also to Kendrick Lamar, to so many other people. Pharrell Williams, when he was working with uh, Kid Cudi, producing tracks, said he just loved working with Kid Cudi, and that. He views him as a timeless alien, right? Yeah. And because he's just got this ability uh, to really open up through music and transcend that. And I love that. I think hip-hop shouldn't be one single narrative. We should definitely explore other emotions besides being pissed off and crunk or fucked up or angry, right? Yeah. And he was so refreshing at the time he came out. I remember... I was listening to a lot of trap music, so that'd be Jeezy, Gucci Man, T.I., all of that stuff. And it was highly negative, very aggressive gangster rap, in my opinion. And then Kid Cudi comes out of nowhere with this day and night stuff. He's coming out with these introspective tracks and like just fun tracks where he's just rapping and showing off his ability to rap, but not talking about any of the topics that the trap rap scene had kind of pushed to the forefront. And he was having so much success with it. And I think we should champion anybody who's willing to be different in the art instead of champion people who are just following the template. And he's still continuing to do that. He's still continuing to drop music. You know, he lay low for a while, but then he came out back out with Kanye with that Kid See Ghost project, which yeah. did really well. It was very well received. And it was the resurgence of Kid Cudi. He dropped Man on the Moon 3, which I think is a great project as well. You know, maybe we might do a flashback review of that. Why like not? You, said, you started getting into his music. I've been a huge fan. I haven't even listened to that album. Yeah, so. I, I've been a huge fan of his music for a long time. One of the few people who has a pop smoke uh, feature but the fact that he's he just loves music that much and he's willing to go and work with artists that may not even match his style like that's how yeah. cool and creative he is and I just like that I think that this is great that he's continuing to put out art and I'm really excited to see what this series is going to be me like. too and the music yeah behind. intergalactic you know the sound score is going to be dope yeah uh, you know the casting is, is already dope we already got some people that are just superstars that are part of this for the talent for producing it as well as acting in it vocally and the animation clips that I saw that we can show you on here looks really dope as fuck. Yes. You know, he's got the, the biking element of the BMX stunt biking through yeah. the city as an, in his search for love, right? And you've got this kind of cyberpunk feel to the animation style, yeah. right? I love it. It's, it looks really dope. I haven't even seen it, and I already like it. So yes. I think that's a great sign yeah. for what's coming out next with Kid Cudi. And uh, I'm excited to see how that happens. And I think ultimately Kid Cudi has proven one thing to us, if anything else, which is that no matter what... It isn't just about being yourself, right? It's not about chasing clout. It's not about trying to fit into the predefined industry guidelines of what should be a hit versus what should not be a hit, right? It's about having fun. Yeah. Just having fun. Yeah. He fucking has fun. You can tell that. And that's that energy that attracts everything else. Right. Absolutely. So, what did you guys think? What's your favorite Kid Cudi song or album? Are you pumped up and excited like we are about Intergalactic? Please comment below. Tune in, like, and subscribe for another episode of From, From the, the Jump. 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 Jump.